Hello everybody, I'm Kushan and welcome back to Command Chains of War. Today I'm going to be starting a scenario number two, God of War, which takes place two months after the first scenario, Blue Dawn. The outcome of the South Korean strike on North Korean forces was a clear military victory, but would have terrible political consequences. The first was that Kim Jong-un was infuriated, and after proclaiming several nuclear threats, he was able to secure key, several key concessions from the United States and China as the UN desperately tried to defuse the situation. This would not only allow Kim Jong-un and his regime to remain in power for the immediate future, but they could now claim victory out of a military defeat. Regional bad actors now had a very good example of where aggressive foreign policies could pay off. The second was that American policymakers, media, and public started a public debate questioning the value of defending an aggressive ally that clearly did not need it. America's armed forces and defense budget were already committed to fighting a long war against terrorism all around the world and should not be squandered to shore up a now strong South Korean army despite long-standing defense commitments. American allies and rivals in the region viewed this as evidence that the United States was a distracted, declining superpower whose stake in the region was a morally hollow as the political and media-driven hubris that seemed to consume it. It was no longer perceived to be a trusted ally, and was no longer to be entrusted with the security of the global commons. The Chinese Politburo had evolved into an adept management team whose analytical skills could rival any modern board of directors, and with the change in Asia's political climate, they saw opportunity. Their primary respons responsibility was to position China to continue to grow and prosper as an industrial, military, and e economic superpower. To do that, they needed to ensure that China's energy routes were under its permanent control quickly as rivals were growing their military power and would soon challenge these routes to contain or influence China. Past politics and American dominance in the region had made that difficult, but now, with the, with that gone, the biggest concern was speed, and that is why the Politburo returned to the Chinese military to help. War would be the most efficient path forward, and it was felt that China's military was as strong as it would ever be, and its rivals never as weak. For, fortune favors the bold. When the Chinese defense and energy security experts looked at a map, they saw two lines of nations and islands that must be brought under Chinese control. The lines run from Vietnam to Japan and includes the Spratly Islands, Taiwan, the Philippines, and the Ryukyu Island chain. The second line runs from northern Japan far south through the Mariana chains to the eastern Indonesian islands. Currently, China's rivals and adversaries control most of these two lines and which in effect contained China behind a wall of sea and air power. All right, so let's go and take a look at the briefing. So command would like to remove Vietnam as a threat to PRC interest in, South, in the South China Sea. Your task is to conduct a preemptive surprise attack that will destroy all air and sea forces capable of offensive operations with a focus on newer platforms acquired from Russia. We have 36 hours to complete our tasks. Our targets are the SU-30, SU-27, SU-22 um, regiments, uh, two Gepard frigates, four Tarantula corvettes, and five Kilo submarines based at Cameron Bay. Um, the air threat is a mix of ultra-modern and obsolete Russian client state surface air missiles and fighter aircraft, other than the um, aforementioned newer stuff. Uh, mainly SA-20. They do have several modern SAM systems though. SA-20s, SA-17s, and Israeli Spiders. Um, they have also maintains numerous SA-2s and SA-3 SAM sites, as well as older MiG-21s, as well as uh, numerous low-end AAA systems. Um, their known air order of battle, again, nothing we haven't really already talked about, SU-30s, SU-27s, SU-22s, and MiG-21s. Um, the sea threat consists of modern missile-armed Jeopard FFG and Tarantula Corvettes and Kilo submarines, along with several offshore patrol craft and small ASW combatants. At last report, all are in Cameron Bay, with the exception of two SSK, Kilo SSKs. Given Vietnamese submarine force operational patterns, they are likely exercising or patrolling off Cameron Bay. In the event of attack, you can expect these forces to sortie once ready. 
So our own forces, we'll go over that in a second when we actually uh, start the scenario. A particular note is the um, CJ-10 um, missiles of the 121st Brigade uh, Battery. So we will have our own land-based cruise missiles. Um, and one other thing I wanted to point out, Vietnam does maintain a small force of Soviet and North Korean Scud missiles. The range is limited, but expect bases near the border to come under ballistic missile attack. So we'll both probably be throwing surface-to-surface uh, -surface missiles at each other. And let's go ahead and look at our own forces. I'm going to hit start real quick just to kind of uh, spawn in all of our um, enemy contacts. So let's start by taking a look at our own air forces and our availability. So here at Zanyi Air Base, um, looks like J-11s, which are flankers, SU-27 copies. Um, looks like mostly armed for air-to-air, -air, some armed for um, um, use against uh, SAM sites with the AS-17 Krypton C missile. Um, down at Mengzi Air Base, we've got J-7s, which are MiG-21 copies. Looks like they're armed with PL-8s, um, which are basically early versions of the, I guess, the American Sparrow. Very short range. They've only got an eight nautical mile range. Um, not a very good missile or a good aircraft for that matter. Um, Tianying Air Base. Um, looks like some more, some JH-7As. The Flounder. Configured for, again, use against uh, SAM sites. We do have a couple in reserve. Um, we have some Predator copies. Uh, armed with a couple of air to ground missiles. Um, some J 20 Mighty Dragons armed with PL 15s. Um, these have a range of 90, 94 nautical miles, so they are equivalent basically in uh, use and uh, ability to the American AMRAAM Ds. Um, third thing to note is that the uh, J 20s can actually carry eight missiles internally. And we do have, looks like we have plenty of reloads for these aircraft. Um, then we have a couple of WD-1Ks. Again, it looks like a Predator copy. Um, armed strictly for recon. And a couple of IL-78s armed ready as tankers. Wuxu Air Base, Nanning Airport. Um, should apologize uh, for any pronunciations. I am uh, definitely not a native Chinese speaker. Um, so just to get that out of the way. Um, so down here, we've got some more J7s, again, armed with PL-8s and forward reserve. The Guping Mengshu Air Base. Um, looks like it's a Badger base. So we have 14 H6G Badgers armed with uh, two YJ-83K missiles apiece, or two YJ-83K missiles apiece. These have a range of 100 nautical miles, 520 knots top speed. And looks like we have another, what's that, six in reserve? The Gulin Tanang Air Base. Uh, we've got some J-10 Vigorous Dragons. Uh, looks like mostly armed in the strike role. A couple reserve available for us. Um, and another couple of J-10Cs armed with PL-15s. Um, which have, again, 94 nautical mile range, um, and the PL-10, which has a range of 10.8 nautical miles. 
Um, doesn't look like these are carried external. Looks like these are carried externally. Um, they do have a um, DECM pod and J10Bs armed with PL12s. Um, PL12s have a range about a, not a 50 nautical mile range, so slightly lower, and they're roughly equivalent to uh, the AIM-120 A, B, and C models. Um, and then up here at the Shaodong, Shaodong Air Base, um, we've got another group of batters armed with KD-63 missiles, and looks like they're armed with four of these apiece. These have a range of 160 nautical miles, and they are targetable against uh, basically all aspects. They can target surface ships, land structures, and runways. They have a range of or a top speed of 520 knots. Um, doesn't look we have any available to rearm. We've got some y HY6U badgers armed in the tanker role. Some Y8W Cubs armed in as uh, airborne early warning. And some Y8CA Cubs in the offensive ECM role. So that takes... Oh, we did miss a couple. Missed an airbase. The Suixi airbase. Uh, we've got some J11Ds um, armed for use against... SAM sites, some setup for combat air patrol. Um, looks like we've got some armed with AS-18 anti-radiation missiles. And these have range of 60 nautical miles, not a bad missile. Um, we've got some reserve fighters there. And some JD-16 flying sharks, which are SU-27 copies set up in the offensive ECM role. Um, Gialashi Air Base. Let's see. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this one. Um, J11s. Um, what lot on this uh, at this air base that's meet, or that's uh, reserve available for us, so we'll be uh, taking a look at arming them. The ones we do have are currently armed with PL12s. And the Ledong Air Base. Um, J87s with the ECM pods. J87As. Um, set up for str Set up. We got four armed for use against SAM sites. And we've got two with this KD88 LACM. This has a range of 100 nautical miles, so it's an air-launched land attack cruise missile, except it can attack surface ships. Uh, 520 knots top speed, and it's got a 165 kilogram um, warhead. Um, we got some Y9, <clears throat> sorry, Y9G Cubs. For offensive ECM, some Y8Qs um, with sono buoys. Um, <clears throat> and I'm trying to tell. Oh, when we got some. Uh, looks like we've got eight torpedoes on each of those. Kind of looks a little. Well, I would say it kind of looks like a C-130, but not really. Um, the Y8X armed for maritime surveillance and two Y9JB Cubs for ELINT. Now we got one more airbase to look at. We've got some J8Fs, Finbacks. Not quite sure what these are, um, but these are armed with PL12s and two PL8Bs which still share the 8 nautical mile range. And we've got some J11Bs, again armed for with a mix of air-to-air -air as well as for use against SAM sites. And so I think that pretty much takes care of our Air Force, or nope, 
We've got one last airbase down here on Woody Island. And down here we've just got some J-11s armed for air-to-air -air roll. And then I think that is it with our for our air forces. Let's go and take a quick look at our naval contingent. We've got some Type 22 Hubei um, missile patrol craft up here to the north. Um, we've got a we've got two Type 52 C Wuling. Wuying 2 class destroyers. Um, we've got another patrol boat missile or patrol fast guided missile patrol craft. We've got another four just south of Woody Island. And then we have a couple of Type 56 um, FFLs. Or I'm so, yeah, so Corvettes. Um, we've got an ASW variant, and I think this other one is an air-to-air. -air. It was a, so we've got an ASW variant, and then we have a uh, surface warfare variant. So those two should complement each other. And then down here, just off of Cameron Bay, we have our we have two submarines of the Type 41 One. These are just a uh, attack slash fleet submarines um, they are they do have uh, diesels AIP motors as well as electric motors and with that that's going to bring this episode to a close um, if you like and want to follow along please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video